Hi all, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to take a test that you have in a Word file and import it into Blackboard. So we're going to be using the following test generator and I'll provide the link in the description of this video. Uh, one thing you want to do when you first start this is open up the documentation on that page. So if I open it up in a new tab, I can look in and what it does is it tells me how each question type has to be formatted. In our case, we're going to focus on the multiple choice, multiple answer and true and false as these are probably the most common. But if you do want to work on like a fill in the blank or essay or matching, you can follow the documentation in here. So let's go back to the word file we, and I'm going to actually shift them over to each other so that we can see them at the same time. And right away, you can see that mine are not in the same format that it's asking for. So my multiple choice question needs to look like this, but right now it doesn't. But if I click into the bullets, uh, now assuming you've actually used Word's natural editing itself to format your bullets, you can just go in and change those. Uh, if not, you might have to actually do it manually. But if I click the bullets and then right click, I can actually go in and choose the bulleting style. In this case, you can see I want it to be just the number with a period after. So I can switch to that and now I've got that part right. I also have the bullets here wrong. So same thing, I would click them, right click, and choose the bulleting style that matches what I want on there. In this case, you can see I want the letter with a bracket. Great. Now I'm also gonna have to actually put in the answers. If I want to, the easiest way to do this is actually probably go in and do this on the generator itself. You see what I mean in a sec. But first, so I got these formatted correctly. You can see the true and false questions require just me to put in the question and then uh, put in whether it's true or false if I scroll down. But let's take this and what we're gonna do is copy all of my four questions in this case, and then go back to the test generator and let's go full screen for a second. And I'm gonna actually put in the questions. So I've pasted them in. And now the final step I really need, and if we check the documentation, is I need to mark off which answers are true with a star. So again, I find it easier to do this within the actual online software. So I can go in, if I knew which answers were right, I can specify those. Question three has two right answers, so I'd mark both off with a star. And question four, true and false, just goes in like this. So now this should import properly. If I want, I can put a quiz name, maybe example. And what I'm gonna do is create the quiz. And what it tells me is I have four questions. Great, as I should, and I can actually download that here. Um, in a second, we're gonna go to a course site and import this package in. Great, so now we're on our course site. What I'm gonna do is go down to course management and within course tools, I'm gonna to choose test surveys and pools. In my case, it was already open, but if I needed to, I'd click it open, choose test surveys and pools. And in this case, we're importing a pool of questions. So I've already got a pool in here that we'll use later in this video, but first let's import this new pool as well. So what I do is either browse my computer for that file, or in my case, I'm just gonna drag it in and then submit. It'll take a little bit of time to process potentially. In this case, it was pretty quick. And I should have those four questions imported. If I want, I can now go in and review those questions and make sure they actually imported quite properly. And I can even preview them and see, yep, things did work properly. And of course, if I had had more than four questions, I would have just imported all of them. Now we'll look at using the pool to actually create a test, but I'm actually gonna use the old pool I already had in here since it already had more questions, but the idea is the same. So go in you can see I have imported this 70 set of questions. Of course, I still have to build my actual test. So what I'm gonna do is go back out to test surveys and pools, choose tests. In this case, I'm gonna build a test, call it whatever I want. In my case, example, I could put description, I could put instructions. Submit, but now this is where I'm gonna find that pool of questions. What I can do is choose find questions, and then it will pull up that pool, which I can then select and choose any of the questions from within that pool to use. Another neat thing that you could do, rather than just selecting these questions and using whichever ones you want, you can also choose to create a question set. So what I can choose is that same 
pool and maybe I want to choose, I don't know, the first 25 questions. And then one of the options I'll actually have is to choose how many of the questions are picked from this pool to use in this test. So maybe I want to pick the five questions from this pool of questions so that each student might get a slightly different set of five out of the 25. Once I'm actually done building this test, I will go to wherever on my course site I want to load it. So maybe I want to go back to my home page. And in this case, what I'm going to do is turn edit mode on. And maybe I have a resource area where I'm going to load this test. Go to resources, choose the test that I've just built. And then I would choose all the appropriate settings, like maybe I want it available to all my students, if I wanted to give it the multiple attempts, if I wanted to set a timer. You don't want to do forced completion because if a student gets disconnected, they can't get back in. Um, but there's a variety of settings you could look at. And then once you're ready, you submit the test and it's now on your Blackboard site.